Another method to normalize a signal's amplitude is based on the RMS level. Here, we're going to scale the volume of the signal such that the resulting output signal's RMS level meets some criterion. In this case, we're still constrained by the fact that we want to change a signal's amplitude, we're going to multiply by a number on a linear scale. Therefore, we need to determine what is this linear scaling factor that we can apply to our signal such that the resulting signal's RMS level meets that criterion. Another level of complexity in this process is that audio engineers usually think about performing RMS normalization relative to a decibel scale. Therefore, we're going to use the linear RMS level of 1 as our reference level of 0 dB full scale RMS. So let's look at writing several steps of code to perform the RMS normalization. Here's a demonstration of the process to normalize the amplitude of a signal to an RMS level relative to 0 dB full scale. As part of this example, I'm going to reuse a lot of the same code that I created previously to calculate the RMS amplitude of a signal. At the beginning of my script, I synthesize a sine wave test signal. It's based on these initial parameters. We're going to use it as an input signal that will process and create a new signal. But for now, I'm going to calculate the RMS level of the input. Again, that's the square root of the mean of the signal squared. For this example of a sine wave with a peak amplitude of 1, when I run the script, we see that it has an RMS level of 0 0.707. Now keep in mind, this is an RMS level on the linear scale. But as audio engineers, a lot of times we're interested in knowing what this level is on the decibel scale, specifically relative to 0 dB full scale RMS. So 0 dB full scale RMS is equivalent to an amplitude of 1. So we can go through a conversion process to find out what this result is on the decibel scale. To decibel scale. Here, I'm going to give it the same variable name, except at the end, put underscore dB to say this is the same equivalent RMS level, but it's on a different scale. So here, we'll do 20 times the log base 10 of root mean square divided by our reference level, which is 1 for full scale. Now when I run the script, it will print both of these so we can look at and compare them. So a linear value of 0 0.707 is equivalent to minus 3 dB RMS. So the process of RMS normalization is what we want to do is change the amplitude of our input signal such that when we go through all these steps, our end result is some desired level. Instead of minus 3 dB, maybe it's minus 6 dB, maybe it's 0 dB, or anything we like. So we're going to process the input signal by scaling the amplitude. So we're going to kind of go in reverse order here so you can see what we need to accomplish. So we're going to scale the amplitude of our input signal. So we're still going to have to use a linear gain change by a scaling factor. Right now, I'll call A. We need to figure out what A is supposed to be. Then we'll go through the steps of figuring out what the RMS level is actually of our output signal. So when we print here, the two things, RMS on a linear scale and dB, we'll see what the level is for our output signal instead of our input signal. All right. So Typically, the way that this works is we know what the level is on the decibel scale. So I'm going to put in here, put in the desired level on the decibel scale. So we'll call this R on the dB scale. For now, let's just say we're going to change it so that it has an output RMS level of minus 6, which is the equivalent of 0.5. So we need to convert this level, our desired level, to the linear scale. Convert desired level to linear scale. So we'll call this R 
is equal to 10 raised to the power of r db divided by 20. So it'll give us a linear level of about 0 0.5. The next thing we need to do is we need to convert this r value over to our linear gain change of a. And there's an expression and relationship that we can use to calculate a that's based on r. And I'll show it to you here. So determine scaling factor a. Say the variable a gets assigned the result here of the square root. I'm going to put brackets around it. Inside of the square root, we're going to have a numerator. We're going to also have a denominator. So I'll put these parentheses in just to hold our place. So first off in the numerator, it's going to be the length of our input signal times r squared. r, again, is just a number, so we don't need to use point-wise power operation there. Then in the denominator, here we're going to put in the sum of our input squared. In this case, it is where we need to use point-wise. So now let's double check what we've got. We've got the square root of the length of the signal times r squared divided by the sum of our signal squared. So that'll give us a value of a. a is then applied to our input signal, and that helps us calculate our output signal. Then we're going to go through and figure out what the RMS level is of our output signal. So we should see down here something like 0 0.5 and an RMS level of minus 6. That would mean that we'd scaled the input signal appropriately to get our desired result. That's exactly what we end up with. I could change this level up here to something else, minus 7. We end up with a calculated RMS level of something else. I could change this to minus 3. And as you can see, we've now come up with a method in several lines of code that will calculate a scaling factor A, which when applied to our signal, will produce an output that now has our desired RMS level on our decibel scale.